Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Let's talk about gastroenteritis in the pediatric population. Patients come in with diarrhea and vomiting, with abdominal pain and fever. The most commonly identifiable cause is the rotavirus. It's a non-inflammatory type of diarrhea, and most cases occur from fecal-oral route of ingestion of contaminated food or water. So if you had to choose the organisms, you'd go with rotavirus. Next, you would choose Salmonella and Campylobacter, Shigella, Cryptosporidiosis, E. coli, Yersinia, and Listeria and Vibria, which are much less common. Also understand that um, inflammatory diarrhea is basically presenting with dysentery, with blood, mucus, fecal leukocytes, cramps, tenesmus, and fever. All of these are signs of inflammatory diarrhea. Also understand that the most common causes of the inflammatory diarrhea are Salmonella, Shigella, Campylobacter, Yersinia, and enterinvasive E. coli. C. difficile is related with antibiotic use and pseudomembranous colitis. And understand that nausea and vomiting suggest an upper intestinal involvement. And fever suggests inflammation. If there's absent or low-grade fever with mild to moderate periumbilical pain with watery diarrhea, then it's not likely going to be a bacterial infection. You want to assess the degree of dehydration and acidosis and provide rapid resuscitation and rehydration to patients. Also, stool examination for mucus blood leukocytes is recommended, and if it comes back positive for blood or leukocytes, then a stool culture. Also, significantly increased detection can be made by PCR. So the therapy is very important. Initially, you want to give IV fluid resuscitation with normal saline or lactated ringers. And most patients will tolerate oral hydration um, using a standard oral rehydration solution like um, Pedialyte or Seralyte. What happens is that decreased diarrheal output and vomiting will occur with these fluids that have lower osmolality which means low glucose and low sodium. So that's the key here. And if the patient is vomiting, then you want to give them slow and small amounts by teaspoon. Um, you want to continue the enteral feedings and promote foods that are high in complex carbs, um, such as rice, bread, potato, lean meats, and recommend low fatty foods and simple sugars. Also, probiotic non-pathogenic bacteria such as lactobacillus and bifidobacterium are useful. Some patients um, may benefit from a single sublingual dose of odansetron, um, but most patients do not need this. That was a quick review of gastroenteritis. Some of the key points we talked about include the causes, rotavirus, campylobacter, shigella, cryptosporidiosis. We talked about the most common cause of dysentery, Salmonella, Shigella, Campylobacter. Uh, we talked about the workup for these patients, which includes looking at signs for nausea, vomiting, fever, tenesmus, and then localizing the pain. And then we talked about evaluation by uh, assessing the degree of hydration and acidosis, and also um, possibly getting a stool culture if the blood comes back negative for leukocytes. Um, we talked about resuscitation methods using IV fluids such as 20 cc per kg normal saline or lactated ringers and then reassessing the patient uh, to make sure that they are well hydrated. Again we talked about the diet and the need to continue enteral feedings and that's a key point you know continue the enteral feedings. So that was a review of gastroenteritis for the pediatric sport exam for the Comlex and USMLE exams. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional lectures. That's comlexflashcards.com for additional board review lectures and a blog to help you get through medical school. Good luck in your preparation for the boards.